Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Leadership Lunch Chat. I'm happy to be here with my friend, Jen Wilson, for us to process what we have experienced through the week as consultants and just in our own practices as well. So today we are going to talk about people development and the importance of that, but also setting up the people developers for success as well. So Jen, did you want to get started with this topic? I do. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, Amy's doing me a favor with this. I have to process this, like barf it up, essentially. So uh, <laughs> thank you for that, Amy. Um, so, you know, because we, Amy and I are traveling world tour right now of all of our friends in the profession and all the different roles and, and focal points. And I was just with a uh, firm administrators, operational leaders, HR directors, uh, some IT folks, um, and I mean, just, just, you know, just hot off the, off the plane from it. And, um, you know, we had a huge discussion about people valuing people mm -hmm. development. That's really what it is, is it's, you know, in general, I'm going to put out there that I think uh, firms are woefully under-resourced in human resources, and they are not, you know, spending the um, the money on the number of human resource heads necessary. The old statistic of one in a hundred employees for HR is so yesterday, and it's more like one in 40 or one in 50, in my opinion. And uh, and so not having enough resource to run people programs is our first problem, but but that's probably easier rectified than the second problem, which is a super, what I'm gonna call cultural values problem. And it's, we don't value people development. We value client development, we value business development, we value uh, the deliver, bill, uh, collect cycle. Uh, we love that cycle. We value the heck out of it. If you're a big biller, we love that about you. Um, we promote and we pay off business development and bill collect, uh, that, the cash cycle, the production cycle. And uh, as a result of that, people fit people development in, in the crannies, in the cracks and crannies of their time and they only do it if they like it. If they don't like it, they make excuses for not doing it. And they're not getting paid for it anyway. There's no promote or pay off people development in most firms. And if I look at your scorecard for your partners or your path to partner card, it rarely has people development. And if it does, it doesn't have any measures associated with it. So those are just some of the things that I just wish would change. They have to change. We talk about how crucial talent is and how short we are in the pipeline, but we don't value people development. Mm -hmm. So what, of course we're short. Yeah. And I think people are hungry for that guidance. You know, uh, I've been, you know, around a number of conferences the last couple of weeks and talking about just the leadership traits, but also traits within yourself to develop and be aware of and and how you know we get in our own way but when there's people not pointing the out to people unfortunately too many times just having the communication skills and the guts to give hard feedback is something that doesn't happen and then it happens in back rooms where it's easier to talk about people than it is to actually help people. So when you look at capacity in most firms, there's enough, but people are not being developed. So there's a small percentage of people that are being overworked and burned out. And then there's the average people that are used when those people can't take on another thing. And then there's people that might've been branded from three years ago that they did something wrong on a job. They were never told what they did wrong or worked on or given training. And they're just not used unless they have to be. And then people already have preconceived notions about that person. And the problem is in this state of culture that we're in, we have to value every person and try to give every person as much of a chance as possible in the training that they need and it's just not valued in many firms. There are firms that do value it, but 
that is a small percentage, unfortunately. And even when we put someone in an HR people role, and I would say when we talk about people, you know, maybe there's one in 50, one in 40, but you know, you've got a recruiter, you've got someone that needs to create educational content. You know, you have to have the trainer, the person that's the coach. There's an investment to put in to make sure that you're keeping your people. So on the lines of pipeline, if you cannot develop the people that you have and put the time into developing the people that you have and think about it as your most valuable resource, when you talk about business development, that is how you make clients happy and grow clients is by having retention of your staff and happy staff. When they're happy, that makes clients happy. And when they know what they're doing, that makes clients happy. And then you can sell additional services and, and so forth. But the problem is if we're constantly falling out from the top being burned out, the bottom feeling like they're not being paid attention to, there's always going to be a pipeline issue. <laughs> So it doesn't matter how many people you put through the system if you can't fix the middle part and actually value that and put investment toward it. And like you said, put the right metrics to be evaluating that for the organization and the contribution that it makes. Yes, Amy. Yes and yes. Um, and so, you know, valuing it looks like making time for it. That's what valuing it looks like. And we have a conversation called, we don't have time. You know, I tell people all the time that that's the unpenetrable objection. That's the, the best possible deflection you can, I don't have time. You know, people are like, oh, <laughs> dude, okay, well then it won't, then we won't do it. You know, even though it's the most critical thing in the business. You know, so, uh, And there's a quote from David or uh, uh, Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N, it's my favorite, one of my favorite leadership quotes. And it's, you know, if you really want something, you'll make the time. And if you don't, you'll make excuses. And so, you know, if we really want to develop our people, keep them, have them grow into the kind of advisors and consultants and, and you know, finance experts that our clients desperately, desperately need, we have to have a cadre of people in our organization who are developing people and get paid to do it and are honored for doing it and appreciated for doing it. And then we can crush it. And so, you know, a few things, a few practical things. One is not everybody can be a people developer. And some firms are moving to a model, especially I'll say mid-sized to larger firms are moving to a model where they're saying, hey, our, our CPAs and our technical experts, we really have to keep focused on this client work and on the development of our staff technically. But we could develop people developers that are from the outside, they call them talent advisors, and they bring them in and they work inside the service lines and they're part of the people development engine. And they're meeting with people and developing learning roadmaps and delivering feedback and they're HR professionals or they're expert managers of people, developers of people, but they're not necessarily CPAs and they're not necessarily, um, you know, uh, they're certainly not billable if they're focused on talent advising. So that's one kind of radical solution. Off the radical and more to the practical business model that most firms are operating under, just getting real about the fact that not every one of your people is a people person. And they're not all gravitating toward people development and they're not all um, loving and caring and compassionate and empathetic and straight and courageous and um, interested in the people. And so those that are have to have time carved off their schedule and be having different measures, not just billing, collecting and new business developed. We have to reduce those measures, those expectations for those people, people, and give them new measures that they can follow for how they're progressing as talent advisors or career advisors and, and give them more people because our non-people people shouldn't have any people. I heard a story this week, one firm shared and very vulnerably, we have the best business developer, best strategic market mind partner great communicator, wonderful person. But when we put people under this person and he's the career advisor, those people quit. And they're like, we don't know what to do. And I'm like, I think we do. 
you know, <laughs> we, we do know what to do. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be doing talent advising. They're too focused probably on the marketplace and they're not that interested in the internal and who knows what their you know bedside manners like, but why would we put people under them when we know that they're not going to do a quality job? So really getting straight about who are our people developers and valuing them and measuring their success in people development and lauding it in public as much as we laud people that sell new clients or you know, that have huge billing months or whatever. We laud our people developers. When their people are promoted, we acknowledge the promoted and the developer. You know, that kind of stuff would change the game in our in our firms. Well, and I would just say too about that person that you're referring to, I don't know that person, but how much training and guidance and shadowing have they been given during their career? Right. So um, too many times I see that people get branded again um, yes. because this fails, but there's been no time invested in that person to help them to actually see if they could be developed into someone that could supervise someone better and be giving the feedback that they need to give in the training. I, what happens as a consultant that we have a very different perspective is we go into an organization when we meet people without any of the stories. So we meet people without the baggage and all the years of what people think and so forth. And then, then we start hearing, well, that person can't, well, funny because when I met with them and I saw them work with some people, I was actually impressed with how they led something, but I guided them there. I gave them a framework. I helped them to be able to execute on that better. And we can't leave no one. It doesn't matter who it is. Both of us have gone through many, many years of training and continue to do so. Like there's never a time you don't need to be trained as far as new concepts and new ideas around this and looking to others that are good at this and picking up new tactics. And, you know, I, my problem with those kinds of comments is, is my next question is what, what have you done to help that person? And so instead of just harming their brand. And so I, I just don't see framework. And when I see when what I'm looking for is framework all the way down when you become a senior in the firm, you are starting to manage people <laughs> because you now have a staff person on a job and you are giving review notes. And how are those review notes being taken? Is anyone being trained on how those review notes are being handled and, and so forth. All of these things of the way we communicate, whether it's verbal communication, nonverbal communication, written communication, it all matters. And at every level of an organization, we are responsible for doing that, even if that's not your main job. Um, secondly, which is a really hard part of the way firms are structured is that you know, many, usually one person is reporting to three or four people. They're, they're getting multiple leaders coming at them, but there's not necessarily one person responsible for their career, one person responsible for their development and just watching out for somebody, right? Like to see if they're getting certain review notes or comments or feedback and the other managers that are hitting that person um, aren't good at being able to say what that is. That's being funneled somewhere. And then someone is taking that information and saying, how can I help? What, what can I do to better develop this person? Because it's possible. And we've all have weaknesses. There, there's nobody that's a perfect person. And uh, there's a book that I refer to a lot, which is called Leadership and Self-Deception. And it's all about self-betrayal because going back to what you said in the beginning is with us talking about this, this takes time. And our first thought usually is the right thought. We know we need to help that person. We know to, we need to reach out. We need to train them. But self-betrayal happens when we start 
going, oh, but I don't have time. I've got this. I've got that. This is more important. I've got a prospect of whatever it is. Instead of actually just taking that time and spending it with that person to help them develop. So this is where we just need to become more self-aware of ourselves too. And what is our 100% responsibility when we're talking about these issues? And if we are going to be putting people and investing people in people roles, that we fully support them. And we're not like a lot of times from a third aspect of this is what I see is that the people that are put in charge of HR functions and people development, a lot of times are not CPAs. So then the answer is, well, they don't really understand (laughs) what it's like to be a CPA. So they're already, even though they're an expert in what they do. And so then they get inched out as far as the types of things that they're trying to put in place in the organization as well. So there's many aspects of this, but number one is to step back and just be self-aware and try to take inventory of where you are getting in the way of people development and not helping and where you can instead be, how do I help? And so that's like a lot there to unpack, but the where you ended there is the individual self-assessment, right? Am I helping or hurting? Uh, but also like the institutional assessment needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, you know, and, and maybe our, our big business developer and big biller, I was quick to get, you know, give up on that person, that guy. Um, but I'm thinking also play to your strengths. You know, at some point you start to say, hey, we can't have everybody doing every job at the highest level. And where are the people that are really good at this and interested in it? And that doesn't mean we let people who have bad behavior, we just write them off. We have to coach them and we have to help them and help them be better communicators to the people. We can't have anybody who's hurting people inside the business. But I do think we have to start to really get real about where people are gifted Mm -hmm. and, and not pretend everybody has to be gifted technically and gifted administratively and gifted in business development and gifted in project management and gifted in people development and blah, blah, blah. It's not possible. And, you know, we we try to simplify it when we're coaching firms and say, let's think about it like a two track system, the technical track and the relational track. And the people that are really gravitating toward relational work probably aren't going to be as technical and we can't shame them out of the business because they're not. And those that are super technical might not be as relational and we can't shame them out of the business because they're not, you know, and, if we start being clear where you were just a minute ago, you were talking about who's going to look out for these people for their career, who's going to watch out for them. And we call that shepherding. And we want one shepherd per person. And we want to know who, who yeah, we want to name names, you know, and some firms are like, well, you know, all the staff report to all of us and we're all shepherding them. And I'm like, that's it. Kiss of death right there. Because every single person needs a tether. Every person has to be tethered to the organization by a real relationship, a loving caring, interested, real relationship. And if they are, you will keep your people. And if they're not, they are loose. You know, I I tell people, I want you to picture it like a balloon, you know, in in the wind kind of, or in the atmosphere, you either have a really good tight tether on it and it's not going anywhere, or it's running around like a kite or whatever out there because there's no good strong tether. And sooner or later it breaks off and blows away. You know, that's how, that's how it works. So that idea, I really like that, Amy, that idea of, um, you know, digging in and naming names and assigning the tether, the shepherd, the career advisor and saying, you're involved in all aspects. You're involved in how's their well-being? How are they doing uh, with their client work? How are they doing in their deliverables, their output and their results? How are they doing in their development as a leader and their um growing and moving up in um, in abilities and um, responsibilities. How are they doing? You know, what do they aspire to? What are they dreaming about? And how are we going to figure out how to help them get that? Um, another firm at this meeting I was at had this incredible breakthrough this last year um, in building, um, you know, that the, the all Uh, mighty and interested and often talked about but never seen um, sort of lattice 
uh, multiple career pathways. You choose your career pathway. You can change your pathway. There's actual specific things you do on each pathway. Some are the fast promotion pathways. Some are the more flexible pathways. Super cool what they've done. And they started to say, you know, it's based on what people, what they want, not what we want. Right. And, and they declare it. And so we know what they want instead of them hiding what they want, because it doesn't sound like what we're trying to make them do. Yeah. And anyway, just there's so much room for us to improve in the way we manage our human beings and, and really call them into the incredible purpose that we have together, this wonderful difference making work that we have. We could get them so much more engaged and so much more effective and so much more tethered if we just spent a little more strategic thinking time on our people programs, a little more money, and then we change the way that we manage and promote and pay our developers. Well, there it is. So, <laughs> so uh, hopefully this was helpful. There were some actionable things for people to take away or even to think about with your teams. Uh, as always, thank you, Jen, for uh, another week of Leadership Lunch Chat. And if anybody has any questions or ideas that you want us to talk about, feel free to let us know. Thank you very much.